So welcome to this particular video on themes and styling. I'm gonna get you to think like an interior designer in this particular video. If you are just starting out on your journey of trying to choose colors and all that kind of stuff for your mobile application, then this is the video for you because some of the techniques here, you'll be able to apply instantly in your own application. And the good thing here, of course, is that the main thing is that we're trying to achieve is to make sure your applications are aesthetically pleasing for your users as possible, okay? So I'm gonna show you some sort of some samples and some some examples here of some where good practice has been applied. I'm also going to show you an example where perhaps it's not been quite the case. And then I'm also going to show you a live example with inside Flutterflow where I'm actually taking the techniques from this video and applying it in the way that I would if I was constructing an application in Flutterflow as well. So I hope you get something out of this video and um, let's get cracking. So the guideline I'm gonna introduce you to is the 60, 30, 10 guideline. Now this is just a guideline, it's not a rule. There could be some variation in there, but at least that's a good starting point, okay? So just think of the 60, 30, 10 as 60% 60 of your UI will be a dominant color, okay? Now this could be the background. It could be just white or it could be blue or something like that, but it's gonna be dominant on your UI. Now the 30% of course will come in as a variation from that dominant color. So for example, if you had say like a completely blue background, the 30% could be a variation of the blue. It could be just something like a different shade, something like that, it could be a panel. And then the 10% is the ascent color. Now this is where your attention needs to be drawn to something, maybe a button. It could be a nice big bright sort of green button or something like that, but you're not gonna overdo it inside the UI. It's gonna be important elements of interest. Okay, so just stick with me. I'm gonna show you what that looks like from an interior designer's perspective next. So here's the example of the dominant color. Okay, now if you just look at that picture, where do you think the dominant color is? Well, pretty obvious, right? It's all around the edges, it's the paintwork, it's everything like that. That pretty well much makes up the dominant color of that particular image. And then when you talk about the 30%, can you guess where that 30% is? Okay, so here we are now looking for the 30%. Okay, so in this particular instance, the 30% will come from actually the sofa. So what you're looking at there is this shade of gray or silver that's actually been introduced into the room. And in the back there, you can kind of see that there's some chairs that are also carrying the same color scheme, but it's making up about 30% of the room. Okay, so you're getting a slight balance, a slight contrast there from the, the more dominant color. Now I'm gonna ask you, where do you think the actual, the 10% is, and I think it's gonna be be pretty obvious. So the ascent color is quite clear, right? So you can see here that the actual table has kind of got that kind of color. You've got the kind of the woodwork in the background there around the kitchen area. That's kind of got that similar color. You've got the clock, you've got the kind of the staircase. There is a small um, sort of shade of that ascent color through through the actual um, the actual scene itself. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of what the 60, 30, 10 looks like. Now, how do you apply that to your mobile or web applications? Well, let's take a look. So here we are, this is a great example here. Um, th these are some samples that I pulled from dribble.com, okay, and this gives you a good example of where the 60, 30, 10 applies. So you can see there, um, with on side, the left-hand side here, you've got the, you kind of got the 10%, right? You've got the kind of this green kind of shade, um, and you can see as you look around the UI, you've got elements of that green that's actually being used, but it's not dominant, right? It's not completely crazy, but what the good thing about that green is, it's drawing your attention to where the key functions are of the application or at least where the key indicators are of that particular application. You can see where the 60% is, it's the background color is white. And then with the 30%, you can see here as well that actually where that's being applied and you can see actually in the UI that they're actually using it with inside the panels themselves. And of course, they've got a few other little bits of color that spread in various places, but it's not dominant. It's not in the way, it's there for a purpose, it's there for a reason. So with inside this UI, I think that absolutely works, absolutely no problem at all. 
So here's another example then of what the 60, 30, 10, how it applies. Now this is a lot more sort of aesthetically pleasing design, okay, right? So what you're seeing here is you're seeing the shades of blue, but you can see in the background there, you can see where the 60% is, it's pretty well much this nice kind of pastel-y sort of off-white color, which is kind of like a, a kind of a blue hint to it. And then you can see there where the 30% applies as well. You've got these like kind of white panels, okay? And that's taken up about 30 or maybe just over 30% of the UI, but it's there or thereabouts. And of course, you can see where the 10 percent is coming from is that really sort of more although pastely it's a much more sort of darker shade of blue okay so again the rules are being applied really really nicely in this particular design So just moving on then, here we are now with a more of a web application, and this is kind of more of a dark themed application. Again, the 60, 30, 10 is being applied quite nicely here. You can see what the dominant 60% is, and that is that solid kind of much more darker black color. And then of course, you've got the 30%, which is kind of just make it out there. It's kind of more like the gray kind of paneling. And then the 10%, although they've kind of got like, got like a gradient kind of color, the rules still apply, right? It's still that kind of, that less that 10%, but it's more significant kind of, um, you know, it sort of draws your attention to where those particular areas are, okay? And of course, the panels across the top there have got some various color there, but of course, they're there for a purpose, they're there for a reason, um, and they obviously represent functionality with inside the UI. So I think that's absolutely fine to, to, to apply in that, in that instance. So moving on, of course, then we're going to look at something maybe a little bit more confusing. OK, so in places here, the 60, 30, 10 has kind of been applied. So you can see where your 10 is. It's the orange, right? That's that works. No problem at all. You can see where the, the 60 is because it's it's the black background. And actually, you could argue actually the 30 is being applied as well with that kind of hint of gray. But this is where I've got a problem with it. Right. OK, there's this white. So is this application in, in a dark theme or uh, or is it just the theme of the application? I find that white way too prominent. If your user is looking for a dark themed application, you'd expect it to be dark. So this gives me some concern. It gives me some worry. Although the design actually looks all right, it's just the color scheme for me just doesn't do it for me. So um, do remember when you're working with dark and light themes, remember what they're there and what purpose are there to serve okay if people choose to have dark they want dark in their ui all right so just bear that one in mind as well so this one doesn't kind of uh, cut it for me in in the way that it looks So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to the very first design. I'm just going to point something out for you as well. Now, this is more of a terminology thing, but it's also really important to point out. So going back to the first design, we've already talked about the 60, 30, 10 in this particular design. But what you're also going to see there is you can see what some class does more, uh, more of a tertiary color. OK, so. You can see here that with, when we talk about ascent colors here at the top here, we're talking about these significant pieces um, or this, the, where we kind of will, will draw our eye, we'll, we'll cast our eyes into whether it's buttons or something or icons or anything like that. But tertiary colors are additional colors that you can actually apply into UI, but they're not significant. They're toned back, they're dialed back, right? So, for example, a tertiary color might be on the left hand side there. You can see you've kind of got it where it says sign up for Google or sign up for Facebook. You can see the color that's been that's been chosen there. What was actually happening here is they've taken the ascent color and the tertiary color becomes a variant of the ascent color. OK, so generally that's the rule for tertiary colors is that it's actually something that is is is, is still it's not significant in the UI, but it forms a relationship with the ascent color. That's the way that I've always applied. The, what, what I do when I'm working with colors um, and you can see how it's applied in this particular application so the the tertiary colors have been used on the sign up with Google and sign up with Facebook but you can see also as well that the tertiary colors have also been applied as well like where it says today's tasks um, you've kind of got the date there which has got that tertiary color in so it's not significant it's small but it's been applied and and it goes in relationship with the ascent color okay so again when you're looking at setting tertiary colors up with inside say for example Flutterflow then you have space to be able to do that when you actually configure up um, your, your, your color scheme so just use it as a guide and then hopefully that should help you along the way. So this little slide I put together, which really just kind of gives you a little bit of a, an example here. So you've got, you kind of got the 100% the scale there and you can see 60% of it is made up of the white. And then if you can probably just make this out on your screen, but actually the 30% is a slight off white, it's like a gray color. And then of course, then we've got the 
ascent color which is kind of that that kind of that dominant green okay and that's the style that i'm going to take through to the flutter flow example which i'm going to show you in a minute on how i've configured these up to work with inside the ui as well so I hope you enjoyed that little introduction there to the theory behind the 60, 30, 10. I hope you found that really useful to kind of get your head around it. And you're not going to be quite so confused as this chappy here on the right hand side. And hopefully it's been more of a kind of like a, a confetti moment where the light bulb has just suddenly come on. OK, so let's now take these techniques through to Flutterflow. Let's apply some of this into our own application. And, and hopefully that will give you the guiding light to apply to your own applications, too. So here we go. So here we are then back in Flutterflow. I've clicked on the cog on the left hand side. I've gone to theme and I'm now inside the theme view of this of the settings of the application. On the left hand side, I've got my light mode theme set up and on the right hand side, I've got my dark mode theme set up. Really simple. But let's have a look with inside the explore themes option that's just up here. So just hit that. And this is where I'm showing you a preview of a screen on the left hand side that I've created. A really, really simple screen on the right hand side. You can see this is where all of my color is configured. So just going back to the left hand side there you can see what the dominant color is you can see what the 60 percent is it's the white background i'm not actually using a secondary color here that 30 percent. i'm not using that on this particular screen but i'll show you shortly on another screen where i'm using it but the key thing to point out here is you can see where the ascent color is being used it's that primary color so you can see here i've just got it down on the button here and i've got it just up here with inside this kind of this fingerprint um, impression so that's where I'm kind of drawing my eye into this particular page. Now, you might point out actually, or you might have spotted that I'm actually using a tertiary color here. OK, so that's that color that complements the primary color. And I've got it set. I've got it set up up here as the tertiary color. And of course, that is the button here. That's that kind of that complementary color for that that primary ascent color here okay so that's where that's configured and where else um the other piece i've got configured is the dominant color is always configured with inside primary backgrounds and the secondary color which i'll introduce you to in a second that 30 percent color is set up with inside the secondary background option now primary text and secondary text are more typeface um colors so for example my primary text would be like a header or something like that my secondary text more typically would be like paragraphs or just more sort of further text that you would have on side the UI. With inside the custom color, you can see here I haven't got hardly any custom colors other than one, and that's my primary button text. And that's what I create to reserve for the actual color that's with inside here. Because when I press the dark mode option, you'll see that the magic happens and that color is then is therefore retained. So let's just choose the dark mode here. Let's choose dark mode. And you can see here that my 10% color is still retained. It's there as my primary color. My tertiary color is just turned to a slightly kind of darker gray. And, and that's there really just to kind of more to kind of maintain that dark mode look to me application. And the rest of it, of course, is just the inverse. The text is just turned white instead of black. Um, everything else pretty well much remains the same. So if I just flick that back to the uh, to the light mode and let's choose another screen. Let's go down to say profile and here you can see this is where we are now start to introduce a, a, a few more colors so on here you can see this is just a simple sort of profile update screen you can see where the secondary the 30 percent color is now coming in because that's the color that is now positioned within inside the backgrounds of these text fields okay so you can see here that's the secondary color and that's mapping onto the 30 percent of the ui that's just here now you might have spotted as well that we have this border that kind of runs around the outside this is what i reserve secondary for so generally what I try to do is if I'm using like dividers or, or or sort of borders around boxes and things like that I would always form this part of the secondary option that's just up here everything else pretty much remains the same if I now flick this back to dark mode you'll see that everything is respected the UI still looks really tidy um, and the colors of course have been adjusted based on the uh, the the theme of the of the user change into dark mode let's move back to light Let's go back to then say some other screens. Let's have a look at details here. So here is just again another very, a very simplified screen here. You can see where I'm using the secondary background color with inside here. You can see where my primary text is the kind of the black text, the black text, the black text. And you can see here that actually my secondary text is just 
actually just along here as well. So my text is just kind of just slightly grayed out, but it gives that kind of two tone, that contrast look on, on the actual UI. And then of course, um, there's nothing else further to say on here. I've got a divider on here, but I've actually just noticed actually that the divider that's actually running along here is actually incorrectly being set as the tertiary color, whereas actually it should really be the secondary color. So that's, that's my mistake when I was actually building the UI. So uh, forgive me on that one, but that would typ typically be in the secondary color. So just um, in fact, let's just look at that and see what that looks like actually in the in the actual dark mode theme. And you can see here that everything is respected um, in terms of the colors that I've actually selected. So let's have a look at one final screen. Let's have a look at help as well. So here we've got a dark mode help screen. If I just sort of switch that to the light mode, you can see here that, that that nicely just sort of moves in and out of the, the color scheme that I've provided. But there's no complexity here. And that's the key thing. Of course, you can introduce custom colors, but I just recommend that you just don't go too crazy on them because the more colors you introduce, the more difficult your UI becomes to understand. So start simple start building your application out, start adopting these color schemes throughout your application. You'll find that as you start creating more and more pages, your consistency will just really go up a notch. Okay, so just keep it simple um, and don't go too complex with the scheme. So I think that's pretty well much it. I mean, that's pretty well much all the screens that I've got to show you here in this particular sample. I'm hoping that is really, really useful to you. I'm going to make this available to you to clone as a project. So please do see the link in the description. So please do go and have a look. Use it as a good reference point when actually trying to work out how you're going to apply those color schemes to your own work. Really hope you found this really useful. Hope you learned something in this video. Please, of course, do like these videos because the more likes you get, the more visibility it gets seen to the rest of the YouTube community community and of course if you love the content here and you like the education please do subscribe to the channel as well because i'll be covering so much more of this on my channel so until the next one thanks for joining me and